Welcome to Science Age or Earth Science. This is Lesson 12, Ocean, Water, and Climate. Um, please make sure that you watch this recorded class and take notes. We will be doing an in-class activity for Lessons 12 and 13. So these are the objectives that we're covering in the unit. And in the last lesson, we talked about the different climate zones and um, how latitude influences um, the, the different zones. Well, today's lesson we're going to be looking at these ocean currents. I also used this map in the last lesson um, so you could visually see uh, the different ocean currents and which parts of the different continents are affected by the different currents. So when we talk about ocean, ocean currents, what are we talking about? Ocean currents are moving water, and it's driven by wind. So the wind is able to move water down um, that reaches depths of about 100 meters. Currents go in a circular pattern, very much like when we talked about volcanoes and how magma moves in um, a circular pattern, right, when we talked about um, convection. So currents move in, in a similar way. The warm will push the cold out of the way. The cold will warm up. It'll move. It'll push the cold out of the way. So it makes that convection type of a current. Now, another type of current that has effect on the northern hemisphere and also the su southern hemisphere is the Coriolis effect. In the northern hemisphere, the Coriolis effect causes currents to curve to the right. In the southern hemisphere, it causes those currents to curve. Um, actually, to the left, I have that incorrect. Okay, so when we talk about the Coriolis effect, um, the, another reason why these currents move in these circular patterns is because the um, Earth is moving, right? So it is rotating on its axes, and also because the Earth is... Um, is a sphere. So as the winds push this water and as the earth is spinning and as we know with convection currents it, the warm pushes the cold out of the way, um, these, these waters will move. So the largest and most pow powerful surface current um, is the one in the Atlantic Ocean which is the Gulf Stream. And it's caused by these strong winds from the west. Um, the Gulf Stream is more than 30 kilometers wide and 300 meters deep. And it carries a volume of water 100 times greater than the Mississippi River. The Gulf Stream will carry warm water from the Gulf of Mexico to the Caribbean Sea. Then it goes northward along the coast of the United States. Um, and then it'll curve east towards the um, Atlantic, and as a result, it has that Coriolis effect. Now, the way that ocean currents affect climate is that it moves cold water and warm water, okay? And when it does that, It'll carry that warm water from the tropics toward the poles and bring cold water back towards the equator. Okay? So, surface currents, if it's warm water, will warm the air above it. If it's cold water, it'll cool the air above it. And so, that influences the climate of the land that's near, the, um, near that coast. The wind which will also pick up moisture as they blow across warm water currents. Um, and it'll pick up that water, which will, you know, then be able to be moved um, into the atmosphere as it goes over the continents to, um, to bring precipitation. Okay? Remember that cold air holds less moisture than warm air. And so cool water currents will bring cool dry weather to land areas. Now, there is a phenomenon that's called El Nino. 
and El Nino is a change in a wind pattern. And what it will do is that it'll have a major impact on the oceans and the land that those ocean currents come in contact with. So what'll happen is that an, if an El Nino wind is blowing, it'll make a slight change in that climate. And it happens about every two to seven years in the Pacific Ocean. So the way that this starts is that there's an unusual pattern of winds that'll form over the Western Pacific. And it'll cause a, a warm, a sheet of warm water to move eastward towards South American coast. And the El Nino conditions can last for one to two years. Um, and the reason why they're a problem is because that'll shift weather patterns around the world and usually will bring unusual and or severe conditions to the area. So like for example, there was a major El Nino that occurred um, from 1997 to 98 and it caused an especially warm winter in northeastern U.S. Um, but it was also responsible for, for heavy flooding and mudslides in California and um, a string of deadly tornadoes in Florida. So El Nino, they understand it, but not fully. Um, they've been able to predict when it, it may occur. Um, and so what they're trying to do with that is perfect that a little bit more so they can reduce the impact that an El Nino would have in a particular area. Now, the ocean obviously is very deep. So um, the deep currents, and all of this water moves, right, because the Earth is moving. Not only is it rotating on its axes, but it's also in orbit around the sun, right? So the wind helps to move the surface currents. Well, the other the other water, the deeper currents, are also moving. And these are way deep below the surface, and these waters are pretty cold, okay? So what happens is that these deep currents move and mix with water all over the world, and they carry cold water from the poles down to the equator, okay? Um, these waters move very, very slowly and it could take thousands of years for them to go from one location like the poles to the equator, okay? And it moves also in um, a convection current. Now, upwelling is when um, the cold water is brought up from the deep ocean and um, what'll happen is that the the water that is down below will start to come in contact with the um, with the shore, and it'll kind of cause like a like it'll come in contact with the shore, and then it'll bring it back, and then it will go back down. So it's a movement of cold water upward from the deep ocean, and then the winds will blow away the warm surface water, and cold water will come and replace it. Um, Upwelling is important because it brings tiny organisms, minerals, and other nutrients from the deep layers of the water um, to different areas. Um, so those, those things are needed for, um, for different areas. So that's how ocean currents affect climate. Now we will be doing um, an activity in class, okay? And um, we'll be dividing into groups again, and we'll be looking at some data. So we will be doing this over two class periods, and so I just wanted to give you a little bit of background information on it before um, you came into class. So I'm gonna be playing the role of a climatologist with the Palmer Station Antarctica Long-Term Ecological Research Project. In other words, I study long-term patterns in climate. My colleagues and I have tracked changes in air temperature on the peninsula since 1947. 
we have observed that although temperatures cycle up and down, it has increased overall. So this is where we are studying. And these are some of the animals that we have been studying. And we've been looking at the penguins, we've been looking at sea ice, we've been looking at the weather patterns, and we've also been looking at the wildlife that lives below the surface. We've also watched how some of the penguins tend to um, feed. We also have looked at um, some of the predators in the area. So when we look at, at these different aspects, we're looking at some of the air temperature. And so what your job is going to be is you're going to be looking at some of the data that we have been collecting over a period of time. Now we have a theory why the air temperature has been changing over time and has been getting warmer. We think it's because it's an increase in greenhouse gases, but we're unsure of the impact that it's having on the Antarctic ecosystem. Your team's job is to describe the interconnected effects of warming on Antarctica's living and non-living systems. So we're going to divide into teams, and then after that, the teams are going to come together and we're going to mix up, and we're going to talk about what you have found to see if we can find a solution. There will be different teams. One team will be ornithologists, another will be oceanographers, we'll also have meteorologists, marine ecologists, and fish biologists. And we'll be working on this um, over a period of a couple of days. So um, good luck, and I will be interested in hearing what you have discovered.